today's video probably be a quick little video but i want to put a vice on my truck that is removable let's go take a look so this is the back of my truck weldon rig if you're new to the channel currently building this should be done very soon uh the plan was to put it here but it is just a little too high for me and i do have like a water cooler one of those igloo ones that i'd like to just mount there strapped to the toolbox for when i'm out on a job i have you know plenty of water so my next option is i'm going to put one in the hitch so let's uh get going on that so for this project you're going to need a vise um i have an american forge and foundry vise that i bought from jd tico probably two years ago for the plans i'm putting it on this truck and uh finally get around getting around to doing it next you're going to need some sort of drop hitch trailer hitch that will go into the hitch receiver this is the cheapest one i could find i think it was twenty dollars six inch drop i would not use a twenty dollar drop hitch to tow anything actually with because um you know because they don't like to complete the welds and all that stuff but for putting a vice on i think it'll do just fine so next you need a piece of plate i happen to have 5 8 thick plate laying around and i'm going to use 5 8 maybe a little overkill but i kind of want it to be a little stout so let's uh get the vise on there i'll show you what i'm going to do how i got to drill the holes i'm going to cut it out with a torch and then we're going to weld it on to right here so let's get to it so next what i'm going to do after i kind of clean this up a little bit I'm going to establish how big of a square I want. I've seen guys, they'll cut it to the shape of this. Um, I can do that. Um, this is supposed to be quick, so I'm just going to cut a square, clean up the sides. So I'll get a tape measure, stuff like that. We'll mark out the holes, and then we will use a mag drill to cut the holes out. So I want a little meat on the bones. So I think we're going to go with eight by eight i like that so let's mark out an eight by eight square the square is only a six inch so we're gonna add an inch So there we go. Let's go get the mag drill. All right, so get this loose so we can spin it. Uh, let me get a different soap. So you're gonna take a nice soap stone, nice and sharp. Mark out your holes. Now I'm going to get a center punch and I'm going to show you a little trick. So first I'm going to be doing these. Get you a nice center punch there. I'm going to be drilling these oversized so if they don't line up perfect it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to be drilling the holes first. I'm going to be drilling the holes first because uh, I won't be able to clamp this on very well. So I can put it on over here, but I'm going to be using some cutting fluid. Um, so I'm going to lose my line. So what I like to do... Is at the corner of my line, I'll put a punch. And I'll put one on the edge. And I'll put one on this edge. So, in theory, yes, I could remark it, all that stuff, but I like these lines right here. 
So now all I need to do is take my straight edge after I get oil and all that crud and when I drill the holes, take my straight edge and just go line to line. And you'll never lose your soapstone lines that way. You'll lose them, but you know exactly where it was. And after you've done your drilling, after you're finished with your drilling, you can just take your straight edge and uh, mark them out again, clean all the oil off. You can get it with cut up, you know, start cutting with your torch. And then you can remark your lines for your cut. Just a quick little tip if you didn't know that. You don't need this spring punch. This is what I like to use, though. You can use any old punch. But that's a little tip. So let's uh, get the mag drill rolling. So, now that you have your holes punched, so you didn't lose your mark, and just like that, after all that oil and all that good stuff, got your lines back. Looking at this now, a little uneven, but that's okay. Let's, uh, I'm gonna use this as my straight edge with the torch. Get a little nice cut on there. I have to move this back side. That'll work. Maybe. Oh, uh, it'll work or it won't. Uh, definitely something you want to get if you're using a cutting torch often is quick connects Right there Best thing ever instead of fumbling around with the wrenches boom quick connect on uh, Here's another quick hack Tip if you want to call it put a little hose clamp on your uh, torch tip Run it nice and smooth. I mean this one whatever as long as it doesn't fall off when I got pressure on it, but that will help you if you don't have a This will help if you don't have a steady hand like myself. Not everyone is uh, I see well out here, so um, We're gonna try our best we got About 35 on the oxygen. We got six on the acetylene and I believe this is a number zero tip So let's see how it goes
Okay, uh, to my standards, that's pretty good. I will take that. Uh, this piece, just a little cleanup, but that's uh, for some 5.8 or 3 quarter, I can't remember. I'm no torch uh, guru. I'm really not the best with a torch. I can cut things. I think everyone can cut something with a torch, but the less cleanup, the better. So, I'll let that cool off. I'm gonna go grab some lunch, because it's Friday. And uh, we'll come back, we'll clean it up, and I'll show you how we're getting it on there, and then we'll get it on the truck. All right, that's uh, pretty much how it's gonna sit. I can't really see. I got that cut just in time. We're about to get gnarly thunderstorms here in New Jersey today. But that's pretty much it. It's gonna go upside down, obviously, in the hit receiver. But just gonna take a quick measurement. We got two and three quarter. Oh, we got two and five eighths. Man, I'm good by the eye. So, we'll get this thing uh, squared up. Obviously, thing don't have to be perfect. Um, it's a swivel-based vise. Just, I like to try and uh, get things square, level, plumb, whatever I'm doing. It's just good practice and a good habit to get into. It. When I'm working my day job, everything gets squared, everything gets plumbed, everything gets leveled. We're professionals and we make a lot of money doing this kind of work, so give a good product, even for something little like this for myself, for my own truck. So just keep that in the back of your head. So today we're gonna be stick welding and we're gonna be stick welding with eighth inch 7018. I don't get to use that a whole lot because I weld on small things, but that's, we'll call it three quarter plate and probably three quarter plate for this hitch. So. We're gonna crank her up. We're gonna use the Prime Weld 180 MIG or MIG 180 on stick settings. This thing actually, these machines actually stick weld 7018, very nice. Um, 6010, they don't really run. I don't think any machine like this runs it, but we're gonna start off at 125. I don't think there's any arc force or dig settings, so we're just gonna see how it runs with eighth inch and we're gonna tack it up like this, flip it over and probably run two or three passes around the whole thing, so. Let's get going. And I'd love to stick well, so I'm excited. Don't forget, check out my bio. I use Rod Shield welding lenses. Uh, promo code's in there. They got all kinds of good stuff on their website, so go check it out. All right, we got this thing slipped out. Not too bad. I love running 7018, especially eighth inch. Flat stuff, obviously this is flat. Couple little spatter spots here. Could be the machine, could be me, could be the rod I'm using. Uh, I'm using actually rod that my buddy Matt, another Matt, gave me. Uh, his dad had it. 
I don't know how it became, but it's from like the early 90s, this rod, um, Murex brand it's called. I actually did a video, if you want to go back and check out way back when I first started YouTube, um, everything was still sealed. I still have cans over there. And let me tell you what, that stuff came out. I just opened this. I just opened this box because I, I filled up a couple of these. I mean, like that rod looks brand new. It's been 30 years. I found a tag inside one of them, a date tag. And it was from like 1994, two years after I was born. So almost 30 years, uh, maybe 30, uh, around 30, 25 to 30 years, sealed rod. Stuff runs like a dream. I've used a bunch of the 332 because he gave me a box of 332. Um, it does require more amps. I was running actually 147 that whole time after uh, 125. I noticed with the 332 that you got to run it closer to 100 amps. I know a lot of people run that. I like to run 85, 90, but this stuff definitely likes hot, 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 hot. Um, prime weld, uh, not much to say. It laid down some beads. They look pretty good. So that's what it looks like. And it gets flipped over like this and the vise gets mounted on there. We'll uh, get all that stuff on there. Once it stops raining, it's gonna rain the rest of the night, so I'll probably do it tomorrow morning. But for you guys, it'll be the next clip. So, we'll see you then. Listen, you ain't gonna catch me slipping. I forget who uh, commented that in the last video about painting. You guys know I like to paint this thing when it's hot. Get that thing nice and baked on there. Don't think I forgot. I will never slip on the paint. We'll give this thing a couple coats. I was going to paint it purple, but I have purple spray paint. I still might, but it'll just match the whole hitch thing. All right, you guys get the deal. All right, guys, here it is. Uh, obviously, I didn't bolt it down yet. I'll do that later, but it's pretty simple. Um, you go get yourself a really cheap drop hitch. Uh, you probably get them on Amazon, Harbor Freight, whatever. I think I got this at Harbor Freight. Um, get some plate. If you got plate laying around, it's it's very simple to make. I was thinking about making one out of tubing, but it was way cheaper for me to just buy the cheap hitch. I would never, like I said, never use this to actually tow anything because the you know just because of how cheap it was, but. You can do this. You can put this on any pickup truck if you need a vise. This is going to be so handy for my truck. Um, again, it's going to mount it here, but I think this will be just so much better. It's a better height for me. I'm a short guy, so that'll be perfect. Cutting things, cleaning things up, but that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys like this video. And the next video I post next Saturday, I'm trying to start a trend here. Saturdays at 6 o'clock. Um, that's when I am trying to post things when I've been doing work here. Um, next Saturday, from this video, I will have a full rig tour. I'm almost done. I got a few more loose ends to tie up on it. So next Saturday's video, full on rig tour of the entire truck. Explain everything and what I do, how I get work what kind of work I do, what I'm going to use the truck for, and all that good stuff. So subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Subscribers, I know I've gotten an influx since um, that rust repair video, so thank you for subscribing. Check out my Instagram, MCF Welding. I'm always posting this stuff as I'm doing it, and catch you on the next video. It's going to be a good one.